Hello everyone, welcome to the CTV News on Calabash TV and on the Wave Radio 94.5. I am Melissa Joseph. The group of students identified as victims of possible human trafficking gathered eagerly Tuesday morning in the hope of meeting officials of the government to discuss, among other things, returning to their home countries. But the students, mainly from Nepal and the Philippines, were met with disappointment. They were informed that they would have to wait a few more days before such a meeting could take place. But the Tuesday morning was not all doom and gloom. The students were approached by a member of the Gama Learning Institute. The representative informed that Gama was prepared to offer free courses in various fields to those interested. However, just as that conversation was getting underway, word got to the Gama representative that the Ministry of National Security must first approve. While the students have not met directly with high-ranking government officials, the National Security Minister, Senator Philip Corbinier, says his ministry has been actively involved and is in constant contact with the students, catering to their needs. Given some support, in fact, we are providing some housing for some of these people. In fact, even some of the housing that has been stipulated to be provided by other persons, we are the ones as a government bankrolling that, that uh, in actuality. So we are providing a lot of housing. We have also been in touch, and I have had myself as minister, a face-to-face -face meeting with representatives of the International Organization of Migration. That is the UN agency that helps us manage these, these problems, the issues of trafficking. I have sat down with them in a face-to-face -face meeting, in fact, both in a face-to-face -face meeting and in a briefing where we gave them a comprehensive briefing on what we are dealing with. So they are fully aware, they are on board, they have indicated to us that they will work with the government of St. Lucia to try to ensure that these people um, can be safely returned and where they cannot be returned to find some safe, um, safe location for them. We have been addressing some of this. In fact, we have been ensuring that some measure of food and so on is being provided. On a day-to-day -day basis, I have to be looking at this with my ministry. Clearly, the government at the same time wants to keep a tight rein on the, the fiscal situation and therefore we can't have a sort of free-for-all. But we, we are on a day-to-day -day assessing and reassessing the situation and trying to ensure that we manage it appropriately. Minister La Corbinier has, however, chided the media for the manner in which the case is being covered. The minister has cautioned against coverage that can undermine efforts. I mean, I saw people going up to places where the people stay, interviewing them and so on. You must remember that these people are assumed to be victims. As victims, they require certain protocols. Part of these protocols are obviously one for their own security and safety. The media has to understand its role in these matters. In addition to that, of course, they are soliciting all sorts of information from the people, which, of course, you can solicit, but certainly not on camera. The media has to be sensitive to what you're dealing with. There are laws that deal with this. You have to be sensitive and respect the right of vulnerable people. It cannot be that it's a free-for-all. And I'm not, I'm not blaming all of you. I'm just simply saying sometimes perhaps media personnel don't know. But read the legislation. The legislation makes it quite clear that as a government we have a responsibility to protect these people and to ensure their safety and to ensure their safe return to their country. And we cannot be doing things that undermine this. I can say to you, for example, even the whole issue of where the people are housed, I mean, people are being told where the people are staying and so on. I mean, this is really not right. We have to get it right on these issues. Because all we need is a major incident and of course the media will walk away and say it's the government that didn't provide security. The 60-odd Asian students came to St. Lucia to attend the Lambert's Academy. The CEO and three other colleagues were arrested and charged for human trafficking. Appearing at a sufficiency hearing last week, the CEO, Dr. Ahmed Shams, pleaded innocence. We, we are totally innocent. I came here as an investor. Invest St. Lucia invited me, got my visa, and they helped me to get all the licenses. Now, I don't know what to say. Are you confident that, that this will work in your favor? Uh, it should, because the Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Education, Minister of Commerce, they helped me to get all the licenses. We are legitimate academy here. And I have two campuses there, one in Grosley, one is Rodney Height. And what happened to the money department? Actually, uh, it, it has been transferred from this uh, academy to our US academy 
it was our commitment to the students that we will complete our academy in USA by the end of this month, uh, year. Meantime, an organization in Nepal which says it is the authorized agent of Lambert's Academy that operates here in Senusha claims that 20 Nepali students who have paid money for visas to travel here to get an education at the academy want a refund. The students said they each paid significant sums of money to Lambert's for all-inclusive boarding, classes and job placements, over job placements overseas upon completion of their education but fell victim to a scam. The managing director of Significant Education Consultancy in Nepal, one of a dozen agents used by Lambert, says her company dealt with 20 of the students. She said the students paid legitimate money to obtain visas to travel to St. Usha. She has called for the return of the students' monies and passports. Even this is the fault of the Senusha government that they were given visas to international students day by day, the agent said, adding that action should be taken against the immigration department in St. Lucia. But the man at the center of it all has also denied that he swindled the, stu he swindled the students. It's written, to, it's written to, for two ways ticket. We never advise them to buy one way ticket. And the immigration and passport office has given them the visa. They came here as a legal way. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, that's it for today. Try to help. And the four accused are due back in court on the 10th of April.